It's Saturday, September 21st, right now on 12 News at 10. Honoring an icon, tonight the legendary voice of the Phoenix Suns has passed. We'll show you how folks are remembering Al McCoy. Vice President Kamala Harris says she's up for another debate. We'll show you how former President Donald Trump is responding. I'm meteorologist Chris Dunn. Our weekend weather pattern bringing us a nice cool down today, but the heat is back on in my forecast. In fact, we'll be challenging some records in the week ahead. The city of Chandler is getting ready to celebrate Preston Lord Day. We spoke to organizers on what they plan to do and what message they hope to send. Plus, this picture out of this world. We'll show you just how many years it took to compile this spiral galaxy image. 12 News at 10 starts now. Good Saturday evening, everyone. I'm Jonathan McCall. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. The Valley is in mourning after the loss of longtime legendary Phoenix Suns broadcaster Al McCoy, who died today at the age of 91. McCoy, the soundtrack of the Suns for 51 seasons with some memorable calls that are still being played all to this day. Sports fans around the Valley remembering him tonight. This is video just into the 12 newsroom tonight from the Footprint Center just down the street from here at the 12 News Studios. Fans leaving those candles and flowers paying their respects. 12 News journalist Lena Washington here tonight with a look at his remarkable life and career. So many folks listening to those iconic calls, Lena, and definitely just remembering the man and just his impact here in the Valley. Absolutely. Al McCoy was a light not just here in the Valley, but across the basketball community. He was the soundtrack for every victory and heartbreak since the Suns became Phoenix's team back in the 1970s. He is the longest tenured broadcaster in NBA history, calling the very first Suns game in 1972, and his last broadcast was in May of 2023. McCoy is survived by his three sons, seven grandchildren and six great grandchildren. We saw statements and tributes pouring out from across the basketball community from for the man rather who coined Shazam and oh brother sons owner Matt Ishbia, coach Mike Budenholzer, Devin Booker, Suns star NBA commissioner Adam Silver among those remembering the basketball Hall of Famer and we caught up with former Suns players, coaches and broadcasters who were inspired by McCoy and who will continue continue to honor him throughout their careers. Well, it's never easy, even though you know it's coming. And uh, my best friend, I mean, uh, we've known each other since 1979. We'd be on the phone together a couple times a week. Uh, he'd call me after a big game. I'd call him after a big game. And, uh, you know, it's a, a friendship that uh, I'm going to miss, uh, you know, because I won't be able to talk to him. Anymore. The greatest son of all time. Uh, he spent 51 years uh, bleeding purple and orange, and he is the ambassador to basketball in Phoenix. Without him, uh, I don't think the city embraces this team as much. The ambassador to basketball in Phoenix, the greatest son of all time. McCoy is in the Suns Ring of Honor. The media workroom in the arena is named after him. He was a fabulous broadcaster and an even better person and friend. We are continuing to celebrate Al's life on our website, 12news.com, where you can hear from more memories from his friends and colleagues. And coming up in about 10 minutes, you'll hear how the Diamondbacks honored Al during their game in Milwaukee. Jonathan? All right. Such an incredible man. Lena, thank you so much. Let's talk about our 12 News Weather Impact forecast tonight after a brief re uh, brief reprise from reprise, I should say, from the triple digit temperatures. Uh, they're coming back. Meteorologist Chris Dunn getting us ready for Sunday. Yeah, coming back real soon. Uh, this is one of the only places in the country where you can say 90 degrees was a cool day, but it was the coolest high temperature since May 9th in Phoenix. The average high 99. Uh, as early as tomorrow, we could see 100 reappear again in the valley. Most of us will be in the 90s. Goodyear, Buckeye at 99, 96 in Mesa, Apache Junction at 95. Here's the satellite and radar, that uh, green that you see south of Flagstaff. That's just a miscellaneous return from the radar. Uh, there's cooler air moving in back behind this little weather system that squiggled across northern Arizona with a bang last night. Uh, but it's now on its way out. So we have a sun-filled forecast, ready for more 100s. Ready or not, here they come. And near record heat.
coming up in my seven day forecast. Jonathan. Chris, we'll see you in a few minutes. Thank you. Tonight, two people dead after a head on crash in Tolleson this afternoon. The Maricopa County Sheriff's Office says that several kids also hurt in that crash near 85th Avenue and McDowell. Tonight, 12 News working to learn more details about a man and woman killed in that crash and the conditions of the kids who were hurt. Stay with us for updates as we get them. New at 10 o'clock tonight, the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office looking for answers after a fire in the East Valley. The scene happening near Hunt Highway and Power Road in Queen Creek. We're told fire crews responded to that home. Once they put out the fire, they say they found a body inside of that home. Tonight, there's no word on exactly how that person died, but we're told that Maricopa County Sheriff's investigators are now piecing this together. A teen is dead after an overnight shooting in Central Phoenix. Police say this happened near 13th Street and Van Buren just after midnight. Two teens, a boy and girl, also taken to the hospital in connection with the shooting. Tonight, police are not saying if they're looking for a shooter. Police are asking anyone with information to call Silent Witness. In just a few days, the city of Chandler will celebrate Preston Lord Day in honor of the 16-year-old who lost his life last year in a savage case of teen violence. 12 News journalist Brenda Lipinski live from downtown Chandler with a preview of the celebration set to take place on Monday. Hey, Brenda. Hi, Jonathan. So Monday, September 23rd would have been Preston Lord's 17th birthday. And although he won't be here to celebrate it, community is getting together in his honor. Orange ribbons down Arizona Avenue in Chandler, all in remembrance of 16-year-old Preston Lord, who was beaten to death last Halloween by a group of teens. The city of Chandler officially marking September 23rd as Preston Lord Day. We wanted to honor the life of a young man whose life was cut short. Preston's death sparking new laws in Chandler to combat teen violence, including banning brass knuckles for those 18 years and younger and prohibiting unruly gatherings. It's not a black thing, it's not a white thing, it's not an Asian thing, it's not a Hispanic thing, it's a people thing. Violence is begotten violence and we as a community are taking a strong stance to say, hey, not in our community. And I think that's the important message that Preston Lord Day is symbolic of. On Monday, people from all over the community will gather at the distillery across from City Hall. There will just be the opportunity, I think, to reminisce, to tell people you are okay, to grieve with those who are grieving. All wearing orange. Orange was Preston's favorite color, and that is, you know, kind of the color scheme of the family that they're doing. And also it's 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 about community as well. You know, it's about local businesses supporting the community, obviously, as well as the family. And again, just bringing up awareness, trying to turn Preston's death into an inspiring legacy. Now, the mayor of Chandler says that anyone is invited to come to this event starting at five o'clock. There'll be music, speakers and a butterfly release for Preston. Reporting in downtown Chandler, Brenda Lipensky, 12 News. This will definitely be there to celebrate him. Brenda, thank you. Now to the very latest on Decision 2024. Tonight, Vice President Kamala Harris says that she is ready for a second debate against former President Donald Trump. Harris accepting an invite from CNN for that debate that would take place on October 23rd. The network said the format would be similar to a June debate between Trump and President Biden. That debate taking place at CNN studios in Atlanta without a live audience. Earlier today in North Carolina, Trump responding. The problem with another debate is that it's just too late. Voting has already started. She's had her chance to do it with Fox. You know, Fox invited us on, and I waited and waited, and they turned it down. They turned it down. During that speech in North Carolina today, Trump also taking aim at Vice President Harris and what he says is the Biden administration's poor handling of immigration. Back here in the Valley this morning, thousands of folks lacing up their sneakers and hitting the pavement for a good cause. This is the scene in Tempe tonight, or this morning I should say, at the ninth annual Champs Annual Childhood Cancer 5K Run and Walk at Kiwanis Park. The event raising money for kids and families who need help as they deal with cancer. Money from today's race will be given to 30 organizations who help kids and families impacted by childhood cancer. You can learn more details at the organization's website at septemberchamp.org.